Salvador is now open up to the world. So as you mentioned, I, it has changed the demographic dramatically. So we see people from all over the world. Now, Asia, Australia, uh, Europe, South America, North America, Central America. So it's like a Salvador is, is well known. And also Salvador is changing now. It's like a, the, the feeling of security and the, the vibe and it's, it's, it's great. So people feel safer, feel welcoming. They are not afraid anymore of coming. So it's like a, we're in a, in a good moment right now as a country. We're live here from Bitcoin Beach, and we have Camilo from Palo Verde Hotel. Uh, if you came to Adopting Bitcoin last year and came to the meetup where we uh, feasted on meat all night here in El Zante, that was his hotel. Uh, it's also the uh, the spot that we host uh, the the monthly Bitcoin meetup. So uh, Camilo has been thrown into the the Bitcoin space the last couple of years. Uh, he even joined us in Miami uh, last month. So thanks for joining us today, Camilo. Thank you, Mike, for having me. Uh, pleasure to share this postcard with you. Yeah, so give us a little history. Um, I don't think you were born in El Zante. So what, what brought you to El Zante? How did the idea to, to open a hotel um, begin? And you know what, what's that been like? Uh, how long have you guys been open now? Like six years. It's been six years. Yeah, Man, I'm getting old. Okay, <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit um, about your own history <clears throat> and what brought you to El Zante. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, I was born and raised in Santa Tecla, which is a, a small town close to San Salvador, which is the capital. I say small, but now it's not as small. Yeah. But um, I'm talking about when I, I was born, you know, was right there. It's not that like now it's a city. So what was it? San, I mean, when now when I go, I see it all as kind of part of San yes, Salvador. Exactly. I wouldn't know. Did it used to be more separate when you were born or has it always been kind of one big the, metropolis? It, no, honestly, I remember that uh, I grew up like surrendered by Cafetales, which is the coffee tree plantation. Really? Yeah. In Santa Tecla. In Santa Tecla. So we were not isolated, but uh, they were still remembered that was covered by, by green areas, like uh, mostly wow. uh, cafetales, we call uh, the, uh, coffee the coffee tree. farms. Yeah, coffee yeah. farm, exactly. And now it's all houses, yeah. and you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's why it used to be like, like a little town. Now it's a, a big city. Very, okay. and it's on the way to La Libertad. And basically, uh, I grew up there, I studied there with my family. And uh, at the age of uh, 13, 14 years old, I started skating with my neighbors, actually Alex Novoa from Essencia and other guys that are, have settled down here. We started skating. So you knew Alex from in and Santa Tecla? Because we were neighbors. Ah, okay. That's why. Okay. And then we started coming surfing to La Libertad specifically to Punta Roca, La Paz and Punta Roca. Uh -huh. We start bodyboarding because get, get a surfboard back in the days was kind of hard and no tourism here. So a few few surfer up and down, but very few. And what, what year was that? And in the 90s, 1992, 90s. 1993. Okay. So right at the end of the war. Right after the end of the okay. war. So right, right after. So the 90s was for me like uh, skating and surfing in my teenager you know, before uh, going to the university. So that's what uh, brought me here, specifically speaking. I, we started coming with my friends to Sonte, which was also a, a surf town, but very small. Uh, the same family that I know are still now. So we started like uh, surfing here in Sonte, and we basically, we settled down here as, a, as friends, community, you know. And we start coming up and down. So that's the I remember that's what brought me here. Answer your question. 
What, when did Alex open his hotel? You know? Ooh, Alex opened, if if I'm not wrong, 20 years ago. Because okay. he's, uh, he's talking, uh, we were talking about he's going to be 20 years since he opened uh, Essential Nativa. Okay. Imagine, 20 years ago. Well, I think that's when I bought my house <laughs> here. It was maybe 19 years ago. So I think he had maybe just opened that hotel when we bought our house here. Yeah, mainly. He's a pioneer. He yeah. Something. Yeah. So you were friends from, from Santa Tecla. You yeah. saw him having all this fun down here in El Zante. And yeah. you thought, hey, let's join him down there and get in the restaurant hotel business. Or what was the... Well, it started like a dream. Uh -huh. Like uh, everyone as a surfer, we dream of having or living close by the ocean, surfing every day, you know, when you don't have too much responsibilities, you have you dream like this. Yeah. And that's what brought me here and start uh, thinking about Sonte and doing something here. But I didn't have like a clear vision at a young age. And that's when I realized that I really want to do something regarding tourism and like a kind of a hotel uh -huh. is because I understood that um, uh, my background is an I'm an engineer, industrial engineer, and also I study uh, an MBA. So uh, putting all the pieces together like make me sense that the way to to uh, improve the condition of my country in general, in important and doing something or giving back something to what I didn't see on my on my young age is doing something for my country, and. I'm talking about economics, social, and environmental. And tourism makes me sense that it's the, the industry that can give back more, is more like uh, how brings more opportunity to people. And the, the value of change is like a very tight with other industries. So it makes me sense. And that's why I came up with the idea to my family and I proposed to buy the land first. And that was 11 years ago. And then, like, uh, making the business plan and so on and so forth. And finally, we come up with the idea to uh, 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 a hotel will be a great idea. And if it can be sustainable, the better. And also adding up the restaurant, which is a part of the uh, tourism change. So it's, that's how everything started. And now Palo Verde is, 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 is a dream come true to me, honestly. Yeah. But, but the real question is... Do you still get to surf or are you like a lot of surfers? That's their dream to have a business at the beach and then they wind up, they don't surf anymore because they're working all the time. Or like me, you, you somehow no. wind up in some Bitcoin project so you don't surf anymore. Do you still get out? I, I still get out. Okay. I go out, but not as as often as I thought that being here closer to the ocean, I would be more like into the water yeah. than outside the water. <laughs> so it's true. And, and it's their reality. A lot of work and all started as a side hustle it didn't have like a, my to my family so i was in charge of, of on top of uh, the project so it was a side hustle first okay and then i finally i you know i quit my uh, nine to five job as a as a regular i was working for uh, uh, corporations but finally i could make it also part of my dream is yeah. like i work in my on my own and you know living close to the to the ocean did did you get your mba here in el salvador or did you go no, somewhere the, the, else the or? university yes here and then i studied abroad i studied in spain in madrid okay yeah i lived there for two years and and when did you learn english oh well i, start, I was studying at the university i went to the us i signed up for the esl like a courses that are in, specifically in LA. Uh -huh. So still it's broken my English a little no, bit. No, your English is good. <laughs> but I feel like you speak, don't you speak another language too? Don't you speak German or something A little also? bit of German, okay. a little bit of Italian, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I'm joking. So that's why I learned English. I didn't start it like uh, from... But you didn't go to an English speaking school in El Salvador? No, 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 no. Okay. no. What school I, did you go to? I went to a public school uh -huh. called Alberto Maferrer in Santa Tecla. Okay, but it was it, all in Spanish. All in Spanish. Okay. Be and then, no, that's impressive. Your English is so good that no, you no, weren't studying. Honestly, yeah, I didn't have the chance or the opportunity to study English as a very young age. So I, I learned quite at the age of, uh, you know, 15, 18. Yeah. And then a little bit 
wh when I went to the U.S., I, 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 I mastered a little bit more. Oh, that's that's awesome. Well, at least you got it when you were younger than when I started learning Spanish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once, that's true. Once, once you get into your twenties, it gets a little it, more uh, more yeah, challenging. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So you have this dream to build a hotel in El Zante. You started on that process, and I think around the time you opened was when things started getting really bad here. Like oh. that's. When was, we had the surge in murders and gangs were controlling everything and yeah, good it, timing. <laughs> well, actually, it was a nightmare, kind of, honestly. I most of the people, uh, friends and family, they are my 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 dad, and my mom, also my brother and my sister. They support me from the very beginning, but the rest of the people say, "Hey, Camilo, are you sure what are you doing? You are investing a lot of money." And the, the country is not safe. Nobody's coming. Uh, and a lot of Salvadorans at that time were getting their money out of the country. Yeah, exactly. That, that exactly. The business, the families that control all the wealth so were selling off their businesses. It, was, it and, wasn't like yeah. a kind of crazy. People say Camilo is crazy. He's putting money in. Uh, Sonte wasn't like looks like it is now. It was way different. Yeah. Way you know you have been here for for years. So tourism was like. Uh, I don't know how to say, it, but the press, uh, not many people was coming from outside. Uh, different vibe. I don't know how to. Well, I remember thinking you guys were crazy, and I lived here because you were building high end, nice, exactly, really luxury, yeah. you know, boutique hotels here. I think Garten had opened. They yeah. opened first, right? No, no, Garten opened a year after. A year after. Okay, yeah. so they were under construction, but I think you were one of the first ones that yes. that opened. And I, I was thinking, these guys are crazy. I, this I, is not a luxury boutique hotel town. Destination, exactly, exactly. More, it's more has been most like a surf and driven town yeah. with more laid back people and not like, a, you say, like other demographics that shouldn't come back in the day. In the day. So, yeah, it was a, we took a little bit of risk, but I was so confident about El Salvador in general the potential that it has as a country because of the people, because of the nature, the waves. So I knew it. So sooner or later. It's, it's, but you must have been having second thoughts when oh, the no, gang no. violence I, got really I was, bad. I was shaking. I was afraid. I was, you know, it was kind of a nightmare. No yeah. joking. No joking. No, it was it was hard. Hard time when it, we started. So right when you opened was when I think, especially in El Zante, things that El Sonte, the worst. Yeah, the thing is that people tend to confuse that the people in Sonte is bad. It's not. The people is of the Sonte is lovely. People is nice. Uh, they are very welcoming. So the theme was outside Sonte in general. So the people that was ruined and was like a forcing us to, you know, to not having a, a, a security is not from Sonte, honestly. So Sonte has been always quiet, always tranquil always chill, always with nice community. So Sante wasn't the problem. I knew it. The problem was outside Sante. But but El Zante was general, affected by it yeah. too. We uh, had that because we I as, remember we had that three week period where three people were killed in the community. I was is. building. I was building. And at at noon I was I just hearing shotguns and somebody died around the corner. Who was oh I knew it. So the the week after another one, the week after another one and so on was crazy it was a nightmare what i'm doing here where well my yeah. wife was asking me that like what what are we doing here like i mean literally our neighbor got yeah. shot it was it got really really bad and then it started to get a little bit better and then covid hit oh yeah so, so as it's, a hotel owner you you're finally starting to feel some moment some positive momentum exactly and, and then you have to shut down so yeah. that had to be just devastating Absolutely. Yeah. I remember 2019 was, as you say, like, uh, it, not only, I, I think not only something, uh, Salvador in general, more people were start coming and start coming, different demographic, not only surfers, more foreign. So, and then, as you said, COVID hit us hard, which we were shut down like a, a month. No, no tourism at all. Nothing. And that was hard, but I, I can tell that 
All did you did you shut down the whole time, or did yeah, you have yeah, guests no, that were stuck in the hotel? Or they they were a couple guests, but they could get out right okay. on time. So embassies were helping them out. Uh, airlines were putting char charters to the U.S., to Canada, or to even to Europe. Uh, so uh, I think well, we 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 went through, uh, but we were shut down. So no income, zero income. Uh, you know, surviving with savings and stuff like that. But now it's like uh, another history. We're back on track. I mean, now it, I think it's hard to get rooms at your place a lot of <laughs> yeah. times. It's, it always <laughs> seems packed. Um, I'm always hearing people say amazing things about it. I don't, do we have some pictures of the, the hotel we can throw up there? I mean, it's, I always tell people it's, it's definitely, I think, the, the hotel where you get the most bang for your buck or bang for your satoshis because uh, you guys do take bitcoin um but yeah i think it's Thank it's you. um a great value for what you get and i mean look at it it's just beautiful it's uh you know it's uh i'm a, I'm a little too old to to be an instagrammer but if i was an instagrammer <laughs> you know that would be the spot i would yeah. want to be uh, exactly. taking shots there at the beach um from the pool so um how have you seen, and I'm curious, I, I, I don't know at this point if you would consider yourself a Bitcoiner or not. I know that it was kind of, you came to it just because of living in El Zante and, and having customers. So, uh, and I don't even really know your Bitcoin journey. So tell me what your thoughts were when you first saw the Bitcoin Beach project popping up in parts of the town. If you thought that we were crazy idiots, or if, what what your you know what your thought was, and then how that progressed as you started having customers come and wanting to spend Bitcoin, and and then I don't I'm not even sure when you first started accepting Bitcoin, but what was that process for you? Yeah, great question. So I didn't know nothing about Bitcoin. Regardless, my brother talk about it like a back in like a 2013 pretty much we were starting at the same time in europe or we were living close he he, he was studying in germany i was studying in spain so he mentioned but you know i remember that and he mentioned it about bitcoin but i didn't understand nothing that was the first time that i heard about it then in 2020 when the COVID he, he uh, hit us I remember start uh, hearing about Bitcoin here in Sunt because you know my, the business was here. I was stuck. I was locked down in the city. I couldn't move because it was yeah. wasn't allowed. You know, uh, so I, I remember that I, I heard something about Bitcoin, and for some reason, when the 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 we in August that was in August uh, two thousand twenty, uh, the government release the unlock the the country so everyone like i was transitioning to the to the regular uh, daily life so i i remember that some bitcoiners start coming to sonte i guess because of you i mean of bit of the project of bitcoin beach and and some of them stay at the hotel and i remember that one guy from canada he sent me even a, a video because he 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 wanted that I, we accept Bitcoin in exchange of the room service, and that was the first like uh, you know approach to somebody ask me for Bitcoin or using Bitcoin as a legal tender or currency or exchange. So I didn't know nothing. So I called Alex, my friend, because I knew that he was here. He, he was using Bitcoin Beach Wallet at that time, and I I say, hey, look, what's what is this? How it works? Explain me. Can I trust? Can I not trust? Is it a scam or what it is? So I didn't know nothing. So it was like my first, and then I, I go back to my to my family and and say, hey, look, this is what's going on in Sonte. We should try. And they say, no. Imagine my, my older, <laughs> my mom and my dad <laughs> saying, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, you're crazy. So don't do that. Okay. I respect the decision because it's family business and okay and say look i'm gonna download the app so i download the the bitcoin beach app app and this guy i accept the risk i took the risk 
on behalf of my family. So I put the money aside. So if something happened, I I, I would reward. Uh, no, I would uh, You'd pay, pay back, with your own money. Yeah, yeah, with my own money because it was my fault. So he, we made the transaction. It worked, but it was I, I wasn't here actually. I was uh, traveling, but the thing was like a kind of confusing at the very beginning. I I didn't know nothing, so it was hard to me to accept. Then when when I that was that, that was July 2001, I remember that was uh, 21, 21, 21, see 21. So then like uh, these people start coming because of you, kind of, you know, I guess, <laughs> I, guess. <laughs> I don't know that part of the story. I, I should ask and tell me more. But so I remember people start coming and and then the the government made the announcement of the Bitcoin law uh, and Bitcoin became a, a legal tender. So that's changed everything. And also because my family and the business is like a formal business, we we do by the book, by by the law, everything. So we we say, OK, OK, we cannot say no. Now it's by law. We have to accept it. So my family accept that and say, OK, let's move forward and let's start learning. In, in so because the government had said businesses need to accept it for them, that was yeah, like, OK, yeah, let's yeah. go ahead and accept it now. Yeah, kind of. Otherwise, my family would say um, we are not interested in that and that's it. But that was like uh, the, the pivot point yeah. where, where we start like uh, seeing differently and start learning about it. And since then, we start seeing like a, a regularly September, October for us in something, you know, it's low season because rains a lot. It's less people traveling. So we were expecting like a very few people, but then it's like a bunch of people <laughs> show up at the same time in September since the Bitcoin law was announced. It was like a... So you weren't expecting that? No, you didn't no, know no, that no. all these people would be coming? It took us by surprise. So September, October was like a in revenues, you know, like uh, what's going on here? And, but so people, you know, people spend satoshis, all are, right, uh, they rather spend uh, fiat money, whatever. So we wouldn't like a measure if they were spending this or that, but the, the occupancy of the hotel were higher than uh, September last year. Well, last what? before COVID, let's say in comparison before in a regular year. So in well, I think it's interesting, too, with because sometimes I think hotel owners don't don't really understand a lot of Bitcoiners don't in the past have not even wanted to spend their Bitcoin because they had this mindset. They're going to save their Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So they're here because of Bitcoin, but it's been a little bit of a chore to get them to start spending. I think that that has changed a little bit. But a lot of times hotels will have Bitcoiners there. They don't even realize it because they're still paying in dollars. But yeah. it's. It's definitely for for a lot of people has you know at least part of the motivation for why they come to El Zonte. Oh yeah, now. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely, we 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 met them. So at that time, I met a guy that was um, I don't remember if he was staying at the hotel or not, but he he somebody hooked me up with him, and he knew it. Uh, Paco, Paco knew it, Max Kaiser, uh -huh. Stacy. So they wanted to come and, and I say, okay, let's do it. So that was my, because the Bitcoin conf was in November. So everything happened like at this September pack, October pack, and then the Bitcoin conf in November. So uh, we weren't ready like uh, as a country as a regular, as a citizen and as a business. So everything happened like a really, really fast. And then game changer. <laughs> Since then, it's like uh, we have a Bitcoin meetup. So Max Kaiser show up, was packed, full, was a different something, different, different demographic, different people, no surfing out of surfing out in the water, so it was different. So that's a part of the history, of, I, I can tell. And then I can move, I can tell you more. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't want to stop you. It's been, I remember at that, I remember seeing that first Bitcoin conference, like all Salvadorans are like, 
what in the world is happening? These people from all over the world are yeah. descending on El Salvador all of a sudden, um, which, you know, it was amazing. But I think it was just surprising to people like you. They just didn't expect it to happen like that. It no. was it was because it never had happened before. No. I mean, I I honestly think that that Bitcoin conference is probably the biggest international conference that's ever happened in El Salvador. I don't know of any other international conference that's of that size that's happened here before. I don't know, but it's really impressive, really impressive. And the, the, the interesting thing I've seen is the, the, the people that have come, a lot of them, it's not even directly because of Bitcoin, but it's been because of the articles about El Salvador always show the beautiful beaches here, the waves, you know, the 60 minute segment that they did showed, you know, Alzante and just presented it. So I've talked to a lot of people that maybe aren't even Bitcoiners, but they're like, yeah, we never would have come to El Salvador before, mm. but all of a sudden it was like a must come see place. Um, oh yeah. Specifically, yeah. I've seen it, you know, in the, in the past you hardly saw any any black people in El Salvador at all, because there's no Caribbean coast. And so a friend of mine that came that their one of their daughters is adopted and 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 she's black and, and it was a real people were mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. want to take pictures with her. And it was something mm -hmm. very different. And now I see, especially at your hotel, it seems like there's there's a, a lot of black, I think mostly from the US, yeah. uh, people coming on vacation here, loving it. Uh, I've seen lots of videos by so it's it's all these different demographics now that are experiencing uh, El Salvador that it's so neat to see. Oh yeah, El Salvador is now open up to the world. So as you mentioned, I, it has changed the demographic dramatically. So we see people from all over the world. Now, Asia, Australia, uh, Europe, South America, North America, Central America. So it's like El Salvador is, is well known already mainly because of bitcoin honestly because we reach beyond the regular tourists from because uh, the majority of the people that come to el salvador are from the us and canada but other regions i mean we cannot reach other like uh, asia africa south africa australia india india so now see different demographic is amazing Amazing. Yeah, I'm always surprised when I talk to people. They're like, mm. oh, "I'm here from Egypt, or I'm here from India." And yeah, it's like, yeah. you never used to see that. No, no, and no, it's, no, no. It's it's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. And also, El Salvador is changing now. It's like uh, the the feeling of security and the the vibe and is 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 great. So people feel safer, feel welcoming. They are not afraid anymore of coming. So it's like a we are in a, in a good moment right now as a country, as a tourism. How do you feel as a, as a business person here, what the, the business environment has been like? You've, you've been operating for a long time. I heard in the past, I would hear mm. a lot of complaints about it being difficult and certain, you know, the red tape and different things here. Has that gotten any better? Do you feel like it's a business friendly environment or do you feel like it's anti-business environment or what would you say is the the take from the the governmental side as far as just just business in general honestly it's like uh to me investing in tourism now and in all uh, industry related with that it's like uh it's good the, so i cannot see like a bad thing about it so good time for investment i can see my neighbor are building up I can see more business open. So the community has opportunities. The people have more opportunities to get a job, different, get, raise their like uh, quality of life, their income. So I think it's, it's we're going on, on the right track. Speaking of that, I, I know historically here, there's been a lot of unemployment. Um, what I've heard recently is that it's tough to staff up all these businesses. What have you seen as a, as a business owner? Has it um, do you feel like the job market is pretty vibrant here? What What are the challenges that you face as a business owner? Okay, yeah, good question. The thing is that because of uh, the demographic is changing, we need mo more skilled people. And we need to 
you know, to the the labor force needs to be more like a, a training of more with capacities already. And we are a little bit behind of that. If we would really want to still market like a high end or another type of demographic, like uh, people that uh, speak uh, English at least or another languages, people that uh, have more skills in culinary arts, you know, because getting people from our communities, uh, they are not, they didn't have the chance, honestly, to go uh, to be in a, or have a better education or learn something that would be useful for their life or regarding tourism. So people didn't have that chance. So we are facing that. Because we are bringing people, but it's hard to serve or deliver that service. The country that has they, to catch up yeah, with the education. Exactly, level. exactly, exactly. And so that's one of the main challenges that we are facing now. It's like a gap between the, the service that we really want to deliver to our, our that niche of market, which is good because bring more income. It's like, a, you know, it's better for everyone, even for the country, more taxes, you know. Uh, we can pay more, more, uh, better salaries or wages. So it's better for everyone. So have, have, that, have uh, many of your employees been participating in the English classes over at Hope House? Oh yeah. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. We, when we started, we, we hire local people mainly because we are sustainable. We believe that, uh, given the opportunities, even though the people didn't have the chance to uh, go to the school or finish the university, whatever. So we hire from scratch, no, no skills, no experience, no nothing. So we, we start training, but the curve of learning is very s slow, takes time. And because we are speeding up the, uh, the process of bringing different kind of, of demographic. The, the curbing, uh, learning curbing is very slow. We, some point, the gap is even, even bigger. So we couldn't, we couldn't do it by our own training, uh, teaching other language. So when you came with the, the program of English, we send them the most of them. We, we were flexible with the schedule. So. We, they didn't have excuse to not to attend or, or learn another language. So we say, look, uh, you want to uh, earn more money? You want to have more tips? You want to, uh, you know, uh, growth? So go to the school, uh, learn something else. We need more skilled people, so go for it. And basically, when you open the, the English program, has changed everything. We have more people on a regular basis speaking really good English. So the, the tourism get the benefit because they get impressed about local people speaking really good English. So we are very happy to, to you know, to collaborate because it's a, an extra hand that we are having as a, as a businesses. I, I've been so impressed by how good the English is. I think when you learn at that younger age, it, it's so much more helpful. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. I've seen, you know, a lot of the young people that work for you or the other hotels, I've seen them, you know, them for a number of years and to see just like, it's like overnight, it feels like they're talking to me in English and their English is better than my Spanish, sadly. <laughs> and, uh, but no, it's been so great to see. And then I don't know if you're aware of what's happening at the high school right now with uh, the new high school that they opened up in El Zante and the, the program that they have that's really designed for tourism. Have you interacted with them at all on that yet? I know it's new. So. Yeah, not really interactive, no, but I have heard about it and I would love to collaborate with the program because we can, you know, hire the students when they finish and or give some kind of internships so they can really experience in real life, real time, what's going on in tourism, in a hotel, a restaurant, something related. So, but you, I would love you, to learn more. You, yeah. you need to go over there. I, I went over there for the first time last week and they they were it was a day that they were cooking. And so they had all these different stations cooking these amazing pasta dishes as part of their wow. curriculum. And so I really do think El Zante is going to have the the highest level, you know, professionals in the service industry. I like so it's that. it's it's so exciting for me to see because you see the people that are interested in tourism or developing that the ones that are more interested in technology 
are starting to get to the level where they can even work remotely for international companies. You're seeing the majority of the students now are going on to high school, which used to be hardly any of them did, and a number of them are in university now. So it really seems like in El Zante, we're seeing a real transformation. Absolutely. I can see the same, honestly. It's really, really impressed, and it's good for everyone. I mean, everything is like uh, progressing and growing in a good way. So I definitely know that, you know, as the the Bitcoin thing has taken hold in El Zante, there's, you know, people have different perspectives on it. And there's some, and some people that have been against it. There's been some people that that are negative. What what do you what are some of the things that concern you or what do you think the things that as a community we need to make sure that we address? I know for me, one is to, to make sure that um, the, the locals don't get pushed out as property prices go up and development comes in. A lot of times that happens. And so that's something that I'm concerned about. But what, what are some of the things that you think are important to make sure El Zante keeps its character? I think uh, education and exchanging and talking like uh, openly about this, uh, about this, about Bitcoin, what it is, people is afraid or have a bad uh, misunderstanding of what it is. And when you explain, because I, as I mentioned, I took the time and, and luckily, and thanks God, I met the right people at the right time. So what I like is when I met people, Bitcoiners specifically speaking, I, I didn't knew about it most uh, than a little bit. And these people, now they have became kind of friends for me, very close friends. And they took the time to explain me because I was asking, I have I had many questions. And I think that people it, it still have questions, still have doubts, still have like a, a curious, or I don't know. So to keep it that is go and try to, to reach them and explain it what's going on. People, it's not that easy to understand Bitcoin. Even to me, <laughs> it's hard. Sometimes I cannot explain It's a multi-year process. Yeah, exactly. It. But imagine in a short period of time, you're trying to like uh, adopt Bitcoin as a whole in a short period of time. It's hard for us. As I, I'm talking, generally speaking, as a Salvadorian. Yeah. Uh, for anybody. I for mean, anybody. Yeah. But we have like, a le you know, our education is like, a, for the majority, I'm talking about for the main, main, there are many people that catch up everything and, you know, but even to me that I have a, you know, a formal education, but I'm not into this, but I took the time. It's time also. You have to be committed to learn about it, invest time to learn, and then you get the reward. Otherwise, it's not that easy. You can say, okay, even though this is gold, this is has a value or you can store value on this people if they don't want to understand it or they don't have the time to understand it it will be tough for everyone and that, that's that i think that is happening because many businesses they don't want to accept because they don't understand not not because they don't want to it's because they don't understand what do, how to use it how to do it it's just complex it's very complex to us as a business owner the process of from the Bitcoin Beach wallet that I, I, I told the first contact that I, I had it, then I moved to a, a non custodial wallet with somebody else trained me how to do it, use it, and then steal my keys and learn not your keys, not your coins. That's what one of the first lessons that I learned. And then I start moving forward and start learning. And now we are in the process of having like uh, our Bitcoin in a multi-signature like uh, storage, cold storage. But it's, it was a process of years. And still now it's for us, it's like a complex, it's very complex. But for the regular business, for the tienditas, for la panaderia, I can imagine that it's hard. So we need to, me personally, that's why we support the, the meetup because we wanted to promote more and people can can have the space to ask, to, to make questions, to meet people as I had the chance to meet people that taught me what I know now, plus what I have researched. But this, uh, I think to me, is like I keep doing that kind of uh, uh, meetups 
and try to they're fun the meetups are fun oh, they're too. very it's fun it's just fun yeah. seeing everybody yeah yeah and, yeah. and here like uh, stories so or people like uh can tell what's going on and different angles so it's good so I, I think you guys had the the big recent uh mining announcement there was a little preview here at the meetup I think oh that yeah, was the, yeah 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 the, the kind of the breaking news on that yes uh, i was uh I, I had to miss that it was my my daughter was graduating so i wasn't able to be there for that one but i heard it was quite the yeah. event oh yeah it was great the last uh, one we're, we're already setting up the next one in june nice. so everyone's invited <laughs> And you guys, I believe you guys use Ebex for your. Yeah. Are you still using Ebex? Yes. Yeah. We just to tell you, we, we have been in a process of learning, so we started using Open Node because in, at, back in the days, there nobody reached out to us uh, beside Chivo, which is the local uh, uh, wallet and way of payment for, as a merchant. But uh, we want to go a little bit beyond. And we op started with OpenNode, who's a U.S. company uh -huh. based in the U.S. And then these guys from Ebex reach out. We met them at the meetups, and because of we believe that uh, as a sustainable business model, uh, helping to the our neighbors and this is like a Guatemalan Salvadorian company, so it makes sense to us to you know to join forces and work together. And we're using Nivex as a way of payment. I, I mean, I actually think they have the best, <laughs> easiest system. I mean, I yeah, never yeah. have problems when I'm paying and, no, and a store is using it. So using good. Them, so. I recommend every merchant that the one to uh, accept Bitcoin use as a way of payment. It's really good. Yeah. No, I've I've been always impressed with <laughs> when when I know a store is using their system, I'm like, all right, it's gonna work. Yeah. So um I'm curious as to if anything changed in your mind or your view or your thoughts on Bitcoin when you went to the conference in Miami. Was it seeing it outside of El Salvador in a venue like that? What what was kind of your reaction or how did it change the way you view things? Or maybe it didn't, but I'm just curious if that changed things for you at all. Yeah, first impression is a lot of people that I I see there is the people that has already been here. They're already were at your <laughs> yeah. hotel. <laughs> yeah, for instance, the the people was on the on the stage like uh, or performing, doing something. It was a bunch of people. I know this guy. I have seen this guy. I have seen this couple. I have seen. So it was to me. This, that was my. I, this is a community. This is like a, a nice community that people know each other, support each other. It's an ecosystem. I understood that that is everyone is helping each other. Um, and and my perspective is like uh, the announcement that caused me like a like a impact in my mind. The announcement that Strike moves his headquarters down to El Salvador. This is a a real sign that this is is not a joke. So this is gonna be like a a, a major change in all. Uh, that is happening now regarding the Bitcoin law and everything that is promoted to investors and, and the, the 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 economy to El Salvador. So that was that I that was one of my takes from the Bitcoin um, conference in Miami. And, and and I think people underestimate like how important that is because that's been one of the the criticisms. Like, well, it hasn't brought jobs or businesses to El Salvador, which, which is false. It has brought a number, but people don't understand these things for businesses to decide to move somewhere. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of time. So we're really at the beginning stages of this. But I every week I have calls with people that want to move, you know, businesses from anywhere that are doing five million in revenue to 200 million in revenue. They're like, no, we want to move to El Salvador. We're trying to figure out mm -hmm. which programs we qualify for. But there's a real surge right now of people coming in and I mean, if, if, if I was just an investor, I'd be buying business uh, office space in El Salvador right. because there's all these businesses that are coming in that are looking for headquarters. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was my, my I was very impressed about this announcement and not only because it's it was there is because the, I can see it beyond what's going on when you see the, the the map in the global south how is now and how can become using the strike 
I have faced sending money to Guatemala, next door neighbors. It's hard. Which used to be a nightmare. Yes, and it, it used to be a nightmare. But with that, it's like a finally, finally. It used to be easier to drive it yeah, across. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So to me, like a make store of saying, what couldn't happen before? And now it's a, a reality. So I think it's a, there are good opportunities. I can see a brighter future for Salvador in general. I'm on the tourism, you know, industry, but I can see that all are gonna get benefits out of. What's well, I think going it's on. gonna be synergistic. I think oh, you have yeah, yeah, yeah. technology and tourism, you know, working together in this weird way. And even a lot of technology workers are now wanting to spend half the year in El Salvador. So you, you know, you have or, or move here permanently. So you have all these industries really working together Absolutely. in this synergistic way. Um, yeah, totally. people are. I think people are totally underestimating the impact this is going to have in, you know, over a 10 year time frame. People, you know, they say they're saying that people always overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what you can do in 10 years. I think that's especially the case with this. Yeah, totally. 100 percent agree with you. Well, I want to make sure that the listeners know how they can book rooms at your hotel. I, I know the rates vary depending on the season, but if you can give them a ballpark just so they know if it's in their price range and what those things offer. So give us give us your, uh, your, thank your you. show us your hotel here. Yeah, thank you for the space. Yeah, we, we are right in the heart of Sonte for those who, who don't know, who haven't, haven't come yet. So we are right in front of the point break, which is the, the main peak of the waves if you want to surf or if you want to learn. Uh, we have uh, 10 rooms and two loft apartments. The loft apartment has everything, the kitchen and living and, and everything. Everyone, every room has AC. I don't think AC. I've seen those. You have loft apartments. Yeah, yeah okay. I have, we have two. Uh, every, I need to check those yeah, out. Yeah, it's everything like a private bathroom, AC, um, a nice bed, uh, also, we have we have six rooms with king beds so for couples and four rooms with double queen beds for family or friends. And do all your rooms have ocean views? No. Well, half of them has like a ocean view, like you can see, and some of them is like a partial view. Partial. Okay. Yeah. And we have a restaurant on site, which is Nantal. It's a fresh and natural food. And um, do uh, cooking every day, daily meals, and also we have other service like uh, transportation. We can pick you up or drop you off at the airport. Uh, massages by by the beach. We have also a Spanish school. You wanna if you are interested in learning Spanish, go to seisonte.com. Uh, now we have the uh, one on one lessons on the at the hotel. You can book in online. Your schedule is your convenience. And also online lesson if you want. Uh, notice, uh, you can see we have by the beach lesson one on one. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible classroom you yeah, have there. Yeah. You're right on the water. Yeah, <laughs> and you see on the back is the point break, and we have also um, a surf rental. There are some activities like yoga classes, open air yoga. You're gonna see some of those uh, photos. We can hang out at the pool, doing yoga if you want. There are different teachers that come different time of the of the of the week, and re price range is around to one hundred fifty to two thousand dollars. Okay, around depends on the the season and the type of, of room you book. One hundred fifty to two thousand. Two thousand, yeah, okay. one hundred fifty to two thousand. The average. You know. That's a big. That's a big range. It's because well. What what is what is two thousand? What is the? It's a honeymoon okay. or like a ocean view, uh, a little bit. Uh, okay, little I bit. Got, I gotta come check that one out. See, see, it sounds like it must be special. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, how can people book? Like, what's the best? Oh way yeah, for them to book? Uh, you can go to our website paloverdehotel.com. Is you can book directly. We have a like a. a, a engine uh, booking engine there, so it's very safe, easy. Uh, to all, you can call us to via WhatsApp phone number. You can check us our Instagram. Also, there is all the information there on Instagram or on our website. Instagram is Palo Verde at Palo Verde Hotel, and it's easy to book. Or you can find us also in Booking, Expedia, soon in Airbnb. Is it better for you if people book directly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So is it, I know in, at the location that people can pay with Bitcoin, can they book using Bitcoin online also? Do you have it set up for that? Yeah, we buy uh, with, uh, we, we can send a link of, uh, to make the payment online okay. in advance of the QR code. It's an easy way to do it. So we accept Bitcoin, you can pay partially or 100% of your consumption or you stay. So it's, you know, we're on, we're, we're happy to, 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 to take to, people's sats. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's true. Is there anything else you want? This was one of the meetups, right? Yes. That we have here. I've seen a lot of familiar faces there. I think that's the one I missed. Um, and that was the last one. That was the last one. The okay. Yeah, yeah, you guys had a full house. Also, oh, yeah. Salvadoran. Stacy up there. Yeah, nice. Builder community. So, so Plus, what? Is there anything else you want to leave people with that, that they should think about, you know, as coming to El Zante or any other programs that that you think are important for them to experience while they're here? Um, oh, that, that was the meetup. The meetup. The meetup. Okay, yeah. yes. I left there very full. <laughs> Those stakes were amazing. Yeah, we, we had a great time in November. So hopefully this year we're going to do the same. Yeah. No, I was amazed at how packed that was. And the tickets oh. sold out like right away. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was great. That was really great. We, we have a great time. The so any, anything else you want to leave uh, viewers with? Oh, yeah. When they're coming down, uh, things uh, they shouldn't miss. Yeah, I haven't. Well, we mentioned earlier on this conversation, but uh, we say we are a sustainable hotel. We are certified by a third party. It's an organization based in San Diego, California. It's uh, on the, I guess, the, it is like a, the faculty of the University of San Diego. They are they are uh, uh, working on that certification. It's especially for tourism destination regarding surf and ski. So we are uh, certified by them. Stock is the name of the organization, and uh, we're promoting sustainability, which to to us means like uh, we have a balance between the economics, the social, and the environmental. So every we, we if you come to Palo Verde. I guarantee that your footprint will be very low and your impact will, will be very high because we are paying taxes. We are hiring uh, local people. We're paying above uh, minimum wage. We are supporting people to go to the university, giving them a scholarship, sending them to the prom school in program like English that you are offering so at uh, Hope House. Uh, we are employing more women than, than men at the hotel. Is 60% are women, which is in Salvador. You know, it's like uh, our society is kind of machista and we are trying to support more women than men because they have, the women has less opportunities in general, especially in the rural areas that where we are working. And also we have like a policy for energy, for water, for waste, so we have a recycle program. We run in the winter with a rainy water. We have solar panels. We separate. We refuse single-use plastic. So we use metal straws. We use like a, we recycle the glass of beers. We cut it and we use it as a glass. You can see on the restaurant. So we have many practices. So if you stay with us, not only are uh, just having fun or resting or coming for businesses or Bitcoin, also you are promoting sustainability, which is very good for everyone and for this planet and for the next generations. That's my last awesome. my, my last thought. Good, good thing to end on. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming down. It was fun uh, yeah. getting to spend time with you in Miami and uh, watch you uh, on your Bitcoin journey here. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad there was people like you that had the courage to set up hotels when things look bleak here in El Salvador and and hopefully now you're reaping the benefits of it and and I know you're going to pour it back into the community. So, thank you for uh coming here today and we'll we'll see you at the next meetup. Thank you for having me.